I build this entire afternoon as being about age, aging, longevity, and life extension, radical life extension. So we're in the radical life extension part. Hang on to your hats. Ben Bova is the winner of six Hugos. Uh, those of you who know the science fiction world know that that's the summit, the Oscars of the sci-fi world. He's been the editor of Analog Magazine, also the top of that heap, the fiction editor of Omni. He's been a gusher of productivity, pointing with remarkable accuracy to the world that we're now living in. He's pals with Spider Robinson, which is how he comes to be here. And Spider, if you're watching, thanks for the introduction. Um, Spider, I think, is watching by way of uh, this new experiment that we're doing with computer streaming. So hello out there in Vancouver, Spider. And back to Ben. Ben has a particular penchant for immortality. He wrote a book about it way back way back in the primitive days of 1998, and he was so persuasive that one reviewer wrote, Bova has persuaded me, death is mortal and beginning to sweat. <laughs> ben? Thank you. Thank you. And Spider, if you are watching, hello. In the year 1900, in the United States, the average life expectancy was 48.3. In the mid-1930s, the average life expectancy in the United States was 60. That's why when Social Security was started, the retirement age was set at 65. The government figured most people would be dead by then. <laughs> so how come? How come we're living longer? and more youthful lives. Well, part of it, of course, is better medical care, especially treating childhood diseases. Uh, kids no longer die of whooping cough and diphtheria and measles. Better nutrition. We eat much better than earlier generations. And this is going worldwide. Around the world, obesity is getting to be as big a problem as hunger certainly shows a disparity, but this is worldwide, not just in North America. And of course, better sanitation has helped to extend our lives. We no longer die of cholera and typhus. I don't know how many of you remember the old television show, The Honeymooners, with Jackie Gleason and Art Carney. Art Carney played a sewer worker, Ralph Norton, and I've always thought we owe Ralph a great debt. But to use the vernacular, you ain't seen nothing yet. We're going to be living even longer. The 20th century saw biomedicine attack and bring under control most infectious diseases, diseases caused by microbes that invade our bodies. In the 21st century, the front line of biomedical research is now genetic diseases. Diseases that are caused by breakdowns in our genes. In previous generations, very few people lived long enough to get Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. But those are the, some of the major causes of concern today. Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cancer. These are all caused by breakdowns in our genes. And they are under attack in medical labs around the world. More than that, biologists are beginning to discover the basic causes of aging. You know, aging is something fairly new in the history of the Earth. For the first few billion years of this planet's existence, the major life form was bacteria. Bacteria still outnumber us. You know, pound for pound, there are more bacteria on Earth than all the other life forms combined. And bacteria do not age. You can kill them. They can die from starvation or being gobbled up by something else, but they don't age. It was the invention of sex that started aging. That's biblical, but it's true. 
Creatures that reproduce sexually age and eventually die, can die from the causes of aging. The bacteria just split and keep going. Now, there are many, many lines of research today looking at the causes of aging. Researchers have found that all the cells of your body, and you've got about a hundred trillion cells in your body. It's more cells in your body than there are stars in the Milky Way galaxy. But each different type of cell will reproduce at a certain rate for a certain number of times, and then it will stop reproducing. The man who found this out originally was named Hayflick, so this is now called the Hayflick limit. When your cells stop reproducing, you begin to get the symptoms of aging. Your skin wrinkles. Your eyesight begins to fail. You lose muscular strength. When enough of your cells reach their Hayflick limit and stop reproducing, you die. Now, it turns out that in the chromosomes of your cells, you know, the, those thread-like structures that carry the genes, at the end of the chromosomes, there are structures called telomeres. They're like the aglets on a shoelace. You know, at the end of a shoelace, you have this little cup. Telomeres are like that at the end of the chromosomes. And every time the cell divides and reproduces, the telomeres shrink. And when the telomeres shrink enough, the cell has reached its Hayflick limit, it stops reproducing, and eventually it dies. Now, there is a substance called telomerase that regrows telomeres. And if you inject cells with telomerase, they do not age. There are samples of human skin cells in a lab in the Bay Area in California that have lived dozens of times past their natural Hayflick limit. If you could work this out for a whole human body, that person would live for many centuries. And this is what we have to look forward to. Now, what happens to the world when people routinely live 100, 200 years or more? And not just living as withered, old, helpless people, but living young, youthful, vigorous lives. How does the world change when the death rate plummets almost to zero? I'll tell you one thing, the life insurance business is going to change a lot. I tell American audiences, you can kiss Social Security goodbye. Baby boomers are already threatening to break most Social Security systems. Uh, that's why the age limit will inevitably be raised. I mean, it was good, 65 was almost good enough in the 1930s, but it's 70 years later and it's not good enough now. Retirement, retirement benefits of all kind are going to wither and disappear as we live longer and more youthful lives. But the question becomes, why retire? You won't be a broken down, decrepit, elderly person. You'll be a youthful, you know, you'll bounce around like a kid of 50. <laughs> to me, that's a kid. I've got children that age. Instead of retiring, I think people will look for new careers. Oh, you may leave your old career for a while and spend a few years learning a new one. You'll have to invest all your life and you know, put money away for the inevitable change of life. But your midlife crisis may come at 70 and then again at 150 and maybe again. <laughs> You'll be ready to start a new career. You'll be youthful and vigorous enough to do it and to want to do it. But if we're all living this long and this vigorously, we've got to reduce the birth rate or overcrowd ourselves into total social collapse. Now, many religions very, very vehemently oppose any concept of family planning or contraception. I was raised in the Roman Catholic Church and I always got the feeling that the church felt that children are your punishment for enjoying sex. <laughs> and maybe that, that's their attitude. But we're facing a classic cultural lag. 
the wisdom of our forebears is out of joint with the realities of today. You know, our, our concepts of morality do change over time. Sometimes they change very slowly. Sometimes it's abrupt. I think it was Aristotle who was asked by a visitor to ancient Athens, you know, the Athenians pride themselves on being a democracy, yet half the people there are slaves. And Aristotle said, well, you know, when the looms spin by themselves, then we won't need slaves. So somebody invented the steam engine later on. And steam power eliminated slavery around the world. Oh, Abe Lincoln had something to do with it in the United States, but it was really the steam engine that made slavery unnecessary and uneconomical. Today's attitudes will need to change. In the United States, we have some strong opposition to forms of biomedical research, especially stem cell research and human cloning. Um, they seem to think that this is against the will of God, although if you search the Bible, you really won't find anything about it. Death will no longer be inevitable. As John Donne said in his poem, in the end, death thou shalt die. You will be able to live as long as you wish and live a young and vigorous life. I gave this lecture in, uh, I think it was Denver, and at the end of it, a rather elderly gentleman came up to me and said, you know, I don't want to live forever. I'm 90 years old, and I don't want to live forever. Another 100 years wouldn't be bad, though. <laughs> the idea of virtual immortality, of living as long as you choose, is new, and I think it, it takes some getting accustomed to. But what that elderly man showed me was that if you are physically and mentally healthy, you're not ready to die. Just take a look at the world around you. Every blade of grass is doing its best to keep on living. Biological systems do not want to die. They want to keep on going. And we now are coming to an era where we will learn enough to make death not an inevitable end of life, but an option. Are we limited to the Bible's three score and ten? Hell no, I would have been gone long ago. Are we limited to 120 years? The oldest person that we know of, we have actual good records of, was a French woman who died a few years ago at the age of 120. She lived in Arles, and she remembers selling pencils to a cranky artist named Van Gogh. She was 120 years old when she died. Now, some biologists think that's sort of a natural limit. The body systems just tend to break down by that time. But we're learning how to do better. Methuselah lived 900 years, 969, I think. Now, the chances are that the people were counting months instead of years, and it just got sort of mistranslated in the Bible. But even counting months, that's over 80 years old, and for that ancient time, that was quite a good record. But whether it's 80 or 900, Methuselah's record is in danger. Most of you in this room will live to be more than 100. So to quote Robert Frost in a poem that he wrote years ago, the last lines are, provide, provide. <laughs> Thank you.